Now, when it comes to smaller tablets under 10 inches with Android 13, there's barely no options out there. And if you want a bit of power too as well, then there's really only this model here from Lenovo. It is their Legion Y700. It's the 2023 model that I've got here. It supports an optional keyboard. Unfortunately, it's not available at the time of this review for me at least, but I do have the Lenovo Pencil, which it does support. This has 4,096 pressure sensitive levels. So the tablet being a little bit more compact is just 8.8 .8 inches, very comfortable size. It's only 350 grams and it's under eight millimeters the thickness of it. The screen is 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so it's 1600p by 2560, and it's 144 hertz IPS. Powered by a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, it has 12 gigabytes of RAM, this base model that I got from Giztop with 256 gigabytes of storage. This is what you'll find in the box. So we have our Type-C to Type-C cable, 68 watt charger, but the tablet itself, our Legion Y700 only supports 45 watt charging maximum. And you can get an optional keyboard, which was not available, but I do have here the Lenovo Pencil. Now that does have 4,096 pressure sensitive levels, it does have palm rejection, more on that soon. And I did get this Legion Y700 2023 model from Giztop. If you're interested in where you can get it, there's a link in the description of this video. So fantastic to get a tablet with this kind of size and dimensions, 8.8 .8 inches, a 1600 by 2560 screen. So that does mean, yes, it's 16 by nine aspect ratio, not 16 by 10, so perfect for gaming. HDR Dolby Vision support with this 144 hertz screen, IPS, and 500 nits is what they claim. I measure 434. It's a good screen, very nice to look at, fully laminated and really fast. The performance of it really quick and snappy, that 144 hertz, which I have it forced to. So more on that display later on. I just wanted to go over this build a little. So the tablet is 350 grams, 7.6 millimeters measuring here, not the camera module. So it's thin, it's quite light, and it has this unibody metal build to it with a nice gray color to it. You can see the Legion branding right there. And it does pick up smudges and fingerprints. So we've got twin loudspeakers there in this portion here. So if you're holding it on the bottom, which you would for gaming, you don't block the speakers. So a USB 3.1 port here that supports only power and data, but the one on the bottom here, this is for the keyboard as well, I believe, but you do have video out support with this. So they have like a dock, I believe in China, they sell for this. You can slot it into it. And having the two type C ports is a blessing because you can plug in then a 3.5 millimeter type C to get your headphones with no lag. And that means it's not much of a big deal. Not a huge deal that we don't have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Not that I'm defending Lenovo with this move. I would have loved to have seen a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but there's a workaround having the two ports. So here we have micro SD card support, which is great. That is up to one terabyte. I believe that's the maximum that you can run in it. And you get the 12 gigabytes of RAM with the base model that I have here and 256 gigabytes of storage. So it's nice and thin here. Good feel to it when you're holding it. On the back, we have a 13 megapixel camera. That's nothing amazing, but it can shoot 4K. And we've got a two megapixel macro, and this is our LED there. So the surface of it here, matte, feels good. Will be easy to scratch, but it does have a good build quality. Along the top, we've got two microphones, and then we have our metal power on with a bit of texture to it, so you can easily find that and then our volume up and down, good feeling buttons. So overall, very good build quality, but note there are no antenna lines, which is a little unusual with a unibody alloy build like this. The refresh rate has been tweaked now. It's no longer 120 hertz with the 2022 model, this being the 23 refresh here. It's 144 hertz, so it supports Dolby Vision, HDR10, 500 nits is their claim, but that's typical brightness. I measure 438 when it comes to nits there, which is still fine. Now, 144 hertz, very smooth, very fluid. Bezels either side are large, the left and right bezels here. And I don't mind this because it makes it a little bit more comfortable to hold. After all, it is focused more on gaming. So long periods, probably that you'll be gaming away, PUBG, whatever titles you do play. And we have a camera right here, which is eight megapixels, supports 1080p. 
It doesn't take amazing quality photos and I'll give you some samples later on of both of those. So the top and bottom bezels here, if you're looking at it landscape, again, not too bad. And the screen is fully laminated and the resolution is 1600 by 2560. And yes, that means it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is great. So overall good screen, very responsive to touch. And I'll just jump into the settings here. There's a couple of little things I wanna show you with the display, the options we do have. So obviously there's a dark mode, that's all pretty standard there. Adaptive brightness, I've got it disabled at the moment. And I don't see any flicker, no banding. Being an IPS, you're not really gonna have that problem. It's just the AMOLED screens that do that or OLED. So the color mode, I've got it on vibrant. That's by default. You can put it onto standard. You can tweak the white balance if you want to. So all great options to have. Refresh rate override option. So you can keep it on auto refresh, which is by default. I forced it onto 144 and you can put it on to 120 Hertz and there is 60 to save on the battery. Now I would have loved to have seen 90, if you're familiar with my other videos, I think 90 is that perfect sweet spot between fluidity and battery saving, and the rest of the settings on that pretty standard there too. So we do have display video out with that bottom Type-C port, and yes, you can run either clone display or a desktop mode with it, which is very good from Lenovo. Just one last thing on the display, that the touch response is very good. The colors for an IPS do look great, but you will see around the edges a little bit of shadowing, so it's not a uniformed pure white. Just at the edges, they kind of teeter off and they have a bit of what I describe as a, a little bit of a shadow to them. Now, it's not that off-putting. You only really see it at an angle. See how it's doing it just a little bit on these corners. And of course, it does have the automatic flip there with the accelerometer that is built into it. So it is a good looking display. The blacks don't look too bad at all for an IPS. And now here in direct sunlight, it's just visible. It's not the best in direct sunlight. Super reflective, of course, being covered with glass. It is running ZUI and this is version 15. Now there have been no updates yet for it. And you will find that their update policy is generally pretty poor in my experience. Lenovo, they don't really pump out updates, bug fixes maybe, major version updates. If this is gonna get Android 13, it's currently on, sorry, 14, it's on 13. Don't know whether that's gonna happen. And honestly, I think it probably wouldn't. They would just release a new version or a refresh then with Android 14 once that is available. Now you can override the default home launcher. If you didn't like the ZUI, you thought, ah, you know, that's not what I want. You want say Nova uh, launcher, then you can run that, okay? So you just need to set it up in the default options. In fact, I think I have that screen already set up here. So I just go to recent apps and I do. So you jump into that default home app and you can set then Nova 7 override that if you don't like the ZUI launcher. Now performance is good in general, so that's just the uh, toggles at the bottom, while well, they like to call that the dock, don't they? And I do have the app drawer enabled, and I find the performance has been very good, very fast, very smooth, very fluid, and I don't see any bugs at all. Now, if you want Play Store, which of course I do have installed, you just need to get the APK file and go ahead and install that, and it should all be working, because it's got part of the framework in there, and you will not have any problems. So, so far for me, it's not an amazing launcher, but it's functional, it's fast, fluid, rapid, and that's what I want really with a small 8.8 inch gaming tablet. The Y700 does support multitasking as you'd expect, and you have floating windows. You can either do split screen, you can have various floating windows on the screen too, and work that way. And you can just go along and maximize and make things full screen, for example, which I've done right here. So there's a couple of things I wanted to go through with my screenshots I've taken. So there have been no firmware updates, as I pointed out, which is either a good thing or a bad thing. Now, my experience with Lenovo and their updates with their Android tablets is not good at all. Okay, bear that in mind. I don't think we're ever going to get Android 14 on this, not a major version. So there is really no bloatware once you remove all the Chinese stuff. There is one little thing here and you might see pop up and notifications, a couple of things in Chinese, but you can go along and mute those and block them. You shouldn't really have any problems. Now it does have a wide Vine level one cert and I did test out Netflix. This is from within Netflix, the playback spec and you can see it's full HD, but it's not listing Dolby Vision there at all or HDR support, which is a little disappointing. That may be coming later on, but I'm not holding my breath on that one. It's up to Netflix really. So performance with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 2, very good, the 12 gigabytes of RAM. You can see that it gets a very decent score here, super powerful for such a small size tablet. This is the most powerful that you can get when it comes to Android. 
and the stress test that I did to check out the throttling, excellent result. So it throttled only 0.5% in 20 minutes of looping, a very demanding benchmark, got a really good score. And you can see, yes, it did heat up a little bit. It got to 38 degrees Celsius. And I felt the frame around this area gets a little warm to the touch, but it's nothing alarming. It's not like getting up to 50 degrees or 45, which does feel a little bit uncomfortable, almost like you're starting to burn yourself there. But no, that's not really happening with this unit at all. So battery runtime, I managed to get six hours and two minutes. Now, this was me sitting at 244 hertz, mind you and the brightness uh, was set very high too to get a more re realistic result. I used to calibrate it to 200 nits, but I now push around about 75% brightness of whatever device I'm reviewing, and that gives more realistic results here. So you can get up to around seven hours out of the battery, but um, I think it's okay, but when you game, you're only looking at about three and a half, four hours, depending on how demanding that game is, for that 6,550 milliamp hour battery. Now, charge time, just 50 minutes here from 15%. So it charges pretty quick and you can, of course, be playing and charging at the same time if you wanted to do so. It does have charging protection. So what this does, if you are gonna be gaming and charging at the same time, do enable this because it will stop charging at 50% to extend that battery life and just to stop it getting super hot, which you don't want. You don't want it to be constantly charging and draining at the same time. It's gonna generate a lot of heat and then it might run into some throttling even though it was only 0.5%. But enable that if you're gonna game a lot and charge at the same time for this those extended long gaming sessions. There is a battery maintenance mode and you can enable this here too, which is the over discharge protection. The stylus does not have a way to magnetically dock it onto this tablet. I don't know if the Lenovo Pencil does work with some other tablets, I believe so. And with those ones, it will sit on with a magnet. But anyway, you place this bottom top or anything, it's not going to magnetically just sit on the side. And to be honest, the tablet's a little bit too small for that anyway, so it's not something that I think would have been possible. It would just get in the way, you'd easily knock it off. And there's nowhere to stow it, of course, so you need a case that you could slot it into uh, as a way of keeping it, I think. So the pressure sensitive levels, let's just test those out now. So it's a 400 and, sorry, 4096. So pressing lightly here, you can see that's very light. How do I start to press? It's coming out thicker. So that is working well. And it does have palm rejection and it seems to have a very good latency. So it's very fast too. I've noticed the response of this. Does it feel like I'm writing on paper? No, because the nib of it is like a hard, almost like plastic and it feels okay. So I can write right up to the edges. Doesn't limit me in that. There's not like a millimeter where it's not detected at all. And a very quick little handwriting sample here too for you. So I'll just get rid of some of this. Hang on. And you can see how fast this is. It's a very, very quick stylus. I do like that. Okay, a very quick messy hello world, but it is good to write on. I find it's handy. So it'd be good for a little note taking. It is a limited sized screen, but you can still sketch quite well on it. And overall, I do find this to be a very good stylus. Another great use for a tablet such as this would be PDF files and eBooks. We've got a lot of power in here with that Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, so it can handle PDF files with absolute ease. You see how quick it is here, and this is quite a large, demanding, heavy file. Now, I'm using Google Play Books here. I uploaded this PDF file manually, and it's looking very good. And of course, we have the auto rotation with the accelerometer. And you can just double tap, zoom in and see everything very clearly. It's a sharp screen. We've got a great resolution on here with that 1600p, the 10 by 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Sorry, I did say 16 by nine before, but it, no, it is 16 by 10. And the 343 PPI makes it look super sharp, that text, no problems at all. And while it might not have an e-ink display, it still is very good for eBooks. I mean, it's a very comfortable size. 350 grams, again, won't be as light as a dedicated ebook reader, but still, this is a multi purpose, high powered tablet focused really on gaming. Still, ebooks look great on this, very, very good, really nice and comfortable, and it just fits the page perfectly, the 8.8 .8 inches. So the speakers on this model are absolutely fantastic for the size of it. We've got left and right when you're holding it, so you'll be gaming like this, you're not going to block those speakers. And I can, because it's got the second Type C port, plug in here 
a 3.5 millimeter to type C adapter and use these, my headphones. And then I get no problems with latency. I don't want to use Bluetooth when I'm gaming. No, 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 you don't want to be doing that. And there's the other type C port that is free, of course, on the right side. So you can plug that and be charging and use headphones at the same time. Or alternatively, if you're using just the speakers, plug in the charger here so when you're gaming, you don't have the annoying plug sticking out of one side, which is a bit uncomfortable. So I'll give you a sample of these powerful speakers now at 100% volume, and they sound really good. Good mids, bass, even a bit of treble there, just powerful for the size of it. And what I think most people are going to be using it for is gaming performance, and it does not disappoint at all. So this is Genshin Impact on the maximum settings and set to 60 frames per second. You don't notice any real lag or stutter apart from when you load in, say, a new area of the map, and that's pretty normal on anything I test out. Very smooth. And just like what I saw with 3D Mark with the wildlife test, that it does not throttle. Only about, well, 5%, not even that. 0.5%, just a tiny bit. The frame rate is consistent. Performance is excellent here. Yes, it gets a little hot to the touch. And I'll show you too that if you swipe from the left or the right, you bring up this gaming performance menu. So it's in balance mode at the moment, but I can turn that on to the highest performance setting there, but really it's not needed. But maybe in some games, if you want just that extra little boost, you're gonna get it. Now the Wi-Fi performance, despite not having any antenna lines that I can see. It seems to be good. I haven't really had too many issues. I just noticed the range isn't quite as good as some of the other tablets I do have out there, but I don't find it to be an issue as long as your router is not really far away or say three or four rooms away, you might need to get a little bit closer, but I haven't noticed any problems. Overall, the gaming performance, the performance out of this for the size of it is absolutely fantastic with the Legion Y700. Moving over to camera, so the front facing camera can shoot 1080p 30 frames per second. Quality seems to be alright, it's nothing special. Built in microphones seem to be okay as well. They're not brilliant, but not too bad. I mean, at least we can shoot 30 frames per second 1080p with the front camera and 4K 30 with the rear, which we'll take a look at now. Rear camera footage, this is 4K 30 that it can manage. I've noticed it seems to drop a few frames. It's not exactly brilliant footage. I don't think it is. Your phone will probably take much better video 4K than this. So there we are for a smaller under 10 inch tablet. This is really the only option you have for Android 13. Something with a bit of power too. Great for gaming, great screen, 144 hertz. Yes, it's just an IPS panel, but it's fully laminated. It's reasonably bright, and at 144 hertz, it's very fast and quick. The UI, ZUI, not bad. It's not the greatest UI that I have used, I will admit that. And what concerns me is the update frequency. We're probably not gonna get ever Android 14, so bear that in mind, that you'll probably just get minor bug fixes, that will be it. So it does support an option, optional keyboard, don't have it. The stylus is very good considering this is a small little screen here. It's got the pressure sensitive levels, palm rejection, it's very accurate. It's nice for handwriting. It's about the best option you have. And for gaming with the small 8.8 inch screen, but the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, very comfortable to be gaming away like this. Fantastic loudspeakers. And because it has the dual Type-C ports on there, USB 3.1, I'm not gonna give it a strike for not having a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack because you plug in an adapter, then your 3.5 millimeter headphones, you've got zero latency issues, which of course you still get with Bluetooth, even Bluetooth 5.3, and you can charge at the same time. So I see it as a bit of a non-issue. Yes, I would have still loved to have had a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but with the two Type-C ports, it's really not necessary there at all. It's all up, this is a great, smaller, yet powerful, tablet here from Lenovo, the Legion Y700 2023 model refresh.